Welcome to part one of API automation. Uh, today we are going to be covering how to generate a REST request from Visual Studio for automation testing purposes. By the end of this video you will have a working request uh, that will tie into part two of the series. The first thing we need to do is create a new .NET Framework project. Select .NET Framework. We're going to name this Test API Demo. We're going to select OK. Now that our project is complete, we are going to delete the class.cs file because we're not going to need it. We're going to create our own. Do that by right click, selecting delete, and selecting OK. And now we're going to add the folder structure that we're going to be using for our API testing. So we're going to create a new folder called API. Inside that folder, we're going to create two folders one response and one for the requests. The next thing we need to do is we need to add our references. We do that by right-clicking references and clicking Add Reference. Uh, the first reference we're going to do is need system. We're going to need system.net.http. Uh, mine's already selected, but you'll want to make sure that's checked. Select OK, and that will add that to the references. The next thing we need to do is add in unit NuGet packages. So we're going to do that by right-clicking Manage NuGet packages. Um, click Browse and type in InUnit. Right at the top, we're going to select InUnit. We're going to select Install. Wait for that. After that pop up comes up, we're going to hit OK. We're going to allow that to finish installing. After that, we're going to need to install the adapter for NUnit. So we're going to uh, look for NUnit test 3 adapter. We're going to select NUnit 3 test adapter. We're going to install it. Click OK to install. And allow that to be finished and installed. Now we can go under installed, um, remove the search filter, and you can see both in units are installed. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we need to add a new class that will hold our requests. To do that, we're going to right click on API, select add, select new item. Uh, inside the column, we're going to select class as an item, and then we're going to name it test API. and click Add. When the class is first generated, it's going to automatically generate all these using, using statements. Um, we're not going to use most of these, so we're going to just go ahead and highlight them. And then we're going to just delete the ones that I know we're not going to use. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of our HTTP client. Uh, we do that by saying private HTTP client. We're going to call this a REST client. Uh, then we're going to do equals new HTTP client. You're going to notice the red squiggly lines. To fix that, you're going to right click on the HTTP client, select show potential fixes, and select system.net.http. After that, we're going to create our 
URI string, so we're going to do private string URI equals string. Um, I'm going to use a public API for this. So you can find these on GitHub. Now we're going to create our public async task method. Uh, this is going to be what we're going to use for doing our request. So we're going to do public async task. I want a return type of string. Uh, and I'm going to call this test request. You're going to have some red squigglies under the task. To fix that, you're going to right click show potential fixes uh, and use system threading tasks. The next step we need to do is create a builder for our URI. So we're going to do var builder equals new system dot URI builder. Uh, inside the URI builder uh, parentheses, we're going to create that's where we're going to actually pass through our private string URI. Uh, I'm actually going to be passing the parameter that go along with my free public API that I've been using at the top. The next step we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the call. So we're going to call it uh, var response equals await. Uh, then we're going to do rest client dot git async, which is the git call. Uh, inside the parentheses, we're actually going to pass in our builder dot uri. Now we're going to set up our context based on that response. So we're going to do um, set up a var context equals await. We're going to pass in our response above. So we're going to do response dot content dot read as string async parentheses. Finally, we're going to return our context, which will be returned as a string.